Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and I have a pretty impressive replay for you today, sent in by Magna Shovda in the Tier 8 Premium Soviet gun cruiser, the Kutyasov, which has been removed from sale, by the way, along with the Belfast, so it might be a while before you see another one of these replays. What's so special about this replay, Jingles? Well, it's certainly not the damage that he does. I mean, he does a perfectly reasonable amount of damage in this game, but... Well, the targets that he's going after are mostly destroyers and light cruisers, ships that don't have a huge amount of health to begin with. So it's certainly not the damage total that he achieves throughout the course of this battle on the Okinawa map. So what is so special about this replay, Jingles? Well, no spoilers, just watch and you'll see. So, while the two teams are jockeying for position, what do you need to know about the Mikhail Kutyazov? Well, she's got the longest range firepower of any of the Tier 8 cruisers. These 152mm guns, of which she has 12 in four turrets, can fire out to a range in excess of 19 kilometers. That is pretty impressive. Also, she's got the best anti-aircraft defences of any Tier 8 cruiser, and can equip the defensive fire consumable, although as you can see here, Magnus has opted instead to go with the Hydroacoustic Search. And that's a pretty good choice on the Kutuzov because she's also got something that most other cruisers in the game don't get, aside from the British, and the Awaki Alpha Cruiser, which was awarded to players who participated in the Alpha Test. She gets a smokescreen. In this respect, the Kutuzov is a lot like the British Light Cruiser Line, which also come equipped with smoke generators, and hydroacoustic search to give an advance warning of any torpedoes fired into their smokescreen. She's not quite as overpowered in that regard as the Belfast, because the Belfast, in addition to the smokescreen and the hydroacoustic search, also has surveillance radar. So the Belfast can sit inside the smokescreen, spot torpedoes fired into it, and spot its own targets outside of the smokescreen without anybody else spotting for them using its search radar. The Kutuzov isn't quite that bad. In fact, I'm not entirely sure why the Kutuzov has been removed from sale alongside the Belfast, and also, forgot to mention it, the Tier 6 premium Australian cruiser HMAS Perth. You see, the Belfast isn't really going to suffer too badly from the changes to smoke detection that are coming in the next patch. You see, the Belfast's you got detected even though you're inside a smokescreen radius when firing her guns is going to be inside her radar range. So if anybody does spot the Belfast, thanks to the changes that are coming in the next patch while she's firing from inside a smokescreen, she'll still be able to fire back at them because she'll be able to pick them up on her radar. By contrast, the Kutuzov, unless she has somebody sitting outside of her smokescreen spotting targets for her, enemy destroyers are going to be able to work their way inside the detection bloom range of her guns and spot her inside that smokescreen without being seen in return. And since that's the point of the changes to the mechanics of what happens when you're firing from within a smokescreen, I don't really see what the point is in removing the Kutyas off from sale. And yet, removing it, they are. And don't get me started on the Perth. The Perth's one gimmick that makes it a viable ship to play is the fact that it can actually move very slowly while inside of its smokescreen. If you take away its ability to fire from inside the smokescreen, it just makes the, the whole ship distinctly mediocre. I have heard, however, that while the Perth is being removed from sale with the advent of the next patch, they're going to rework it, and it will be back on sale at some point in the future. Hopefully it'll give the guns a little bit more rage. But anyway, back to the battle. What's happening with uh, Magnus in the Kutuzov? This is the ideal position for a Kutuzov captain to be in. He's got no shortage of large, slow-moving targets to shoot at, well within the maximum range of his guns. He was hidden by his smokescreen. Now the smokescreen's worn off, but he's got the cover of the island there to protect him from anybody who does start to take shots at him. He's able to lob his shells over the top of the island with ease. And thanks to that island, and the destroyers that are out there in front of him, he's not actually in direct line of sight of any of these enemy ships, and he was able to fire without actually being detected. Although he has been detected there, he reversed a little bit too far, and he was momentarily spotted by enemy aircraft. But even if he does get spotted, he's got the island to take cover behind, and there are no shortage of other ships on the team that these guys are much more interested in shooting at, like those destroyers, for example. He's already done 31, 32,000 damage. There goes the Bismarck. 
And now they're finally starting to pay attention to him, although only one enemy ship is targeting him at the moment. Not quite sure who has him targeted, possibly it's the San Luis over there, although it doesn't really matter because his smoke screens back off cooldown, and once again he's undetected. And still no shortage of enemy ships to shoot at, thanks to the spotting work that's being done by the destroyers on his team. So once again he's able to spit out a blistering volume of fire from these 152mm guns and just continue pummeling targets with relative impunity. He doesn't need to worry about the hydroacoustic search, nobody's really in range to fire a torpedo at him anyway, and if they were, the two destroyers up ahead would spot them coming long before he would. So he's pretty good. I think he may be running with the inertia fuse high explosive skill, because he's not setting an awful lot of fires given the volume of high explosive shells that he's pumping out. Most of you are probably aware of what that skill does, for those of you who aren't, it increases the penetration value of your high explosive shells by 30%, which means that your high explosive will do more damage to more heavily armoured targets, but it reduces fairly drastically the chance that your shells are actually going to set a fire. And the fact that he's, well, scored nearly 70 shell hits so far, but he's only set one fire, would indicate that he's probably using that skill. Now his smoke screen still has some time left on it, and the reason he's done that is, well, there's two reasons. You don't just want to be sitting inside your smoke screen, merrily firing away with your guns and your kutches off, and then suddenly the smoke screen's gone, you weren't paying attention to the timer, and you're sitting there in full view of a whole bunch of enemy ships. Because then any ship shooting at you is going to have a real hard time missing. He's taken fire from the Mogami, he's taken fire from the San Luis, and potentially is also going to be taken fire from the Destroyer hidden in that smoke screen over there, and they don't have anybody else to shoot at at the moment other than him. There was, in fact there still is, a friendly destroyer up there, but, well, they can't see the Shimakaze because one, he's a Shimakaze and he wasn't firing his guns, and two, he's now inside a smoke screen. There's his first kill, the San Luis has been taken out. He's now switching his fire to the Megami over there. Oh no, hold on a second, a potential kill steal coming up on the Bismarck. Shots out, yep, you got him! <laughs> he's still being targeted, however. Now... Who is it? Because I'm not actually seeing any shots coming in. There's another smoke screen back there, and you can see shots coming out of it. So, that for any turpits has taken fire from... There he is. It's a Fletcher, and he does not have an awful lot of health. He's fired his torpedoes, which have been spotted by the turpits' catapult aircraft. Shots out just as the Fletcher disappears. Are you ready for kill number three? Gotcha! <laughs> But there was another smoke screen just over there, and somebody's targeting him, but there are no shots coming in. That's got to be the destroyer, who's lining up for torpedo shots at him. Oh, speaking of destroyers, well, you've got nothing else visible, so, you know, you take shots at the targets that you can see. But he's got his hydroacoustic search running, because he's anticipating torpedoes incoming. Oh, that guy's so dead. Yeah, <laughs> very, very dead. Because he's anticipating torpedoes coming, from that direction. Enemy destroyer hidden inside a smoke screen. Of course, now that he's stopped shooting and the enemy German destroyer was sunk, the guy in that smoke screen can't see him. And he doesn't have to get that much closer to be able to pick that guy up with his hydroacoustic search. The problem, of course, is the soon as he starts firing at the destroyer inside that smoke screen, he's going to be a broadside on target to that Megami that we just saw. It's just a question of whether or not that guy is paying attention. <laughs> Magnus is there in chat. Come fight me! And there he is! Inside hydroacoustic search range, he knows he's been spotted. It's another Fletcher. Okay, I didn't actually see any torpedoes yet. So the Fletcher must have been reloading. Potentially was firing his torpedoes inside the Shimakaze smokescreen. He's angling for the torpedo shot. Torpedo shot denied! <laughs> Kill number four. Of course, the downside of having guns that have a 19 kilometer range is that when you fire those guns, you can be spotted from 19 kilometers away. But as of now, absolutely nobody is paying any attention to him. He loads up the armor piercing because he's got a choice of three cruisers all broadside onto him, and the Minotaur was looking like a fat, juicy kill, but he's just managed to lose himself inside his own smoke screen. I suspect Magnus didn't target the Minotaur initially because he expected that the torpedoes that were fired into the smoke screen were going to finish him off. 
but they didn't. So with the Megami now angling away, he switches back to the high explosive. Shots are in the air. Wait for it, wait for it. Megami has been sunk. Enemy cruiser sunk. Oh yes, enemy cruiser sunk. But Magnus is just getting warmed up. In fact, Magnus is starting to get very, very carried away in chat. <laughs> but he's just scored a crack and I think we can forgive him that. Anyway, smokescreen to the left contains a Minotaur, smokescreen to the right contains a Kutchizov, and he's just coming into gun range of the Amagi over there as well. He's not spotted at the moment, but if he gets within 19 kilometers of that Amagi and starts shooting at him, both the Minotaur and the Kutchizov will pick him up as a target. Now there are some torpedoes being fired into the Minotaur's smokescreen, and that Minotaur's smokescreen is not going to last much longer. And still, Magnus holds his fire and doesn't, for some reason, instantly take the opportunity to obliterate that Minotaur. I suspect it's because he was too busy typing. <laughs> Soviet propaganda into chat. He empties his first barrage at the Amagi, possibly anticipating that those torpedoes were going to finish the Minotaur off. But they don't. He takes some hits from the Kutuzov and ends the Minotaur with his next salvo. Kill number six. Now, two Soviet Tier 8 cruisers enter. Only one will leave. The problem for that Kutuzov is that his smokescreen just expired. Also, he's sailing broadside on and exposing the side of his ship to multiple citadels. And there's kill number seven. Magnus is now comfortably inside his own smokescreen, switches back to the high explosive and can pummel the lone surviving ship on the enemy team, that Amagi, with complete impunity. There's a nice little bit of banter going on in chat there. One of the enemy team is accusing him of being a mass murderer. <laughs> and he's begging his team for the kill on the Amagi. Uh, Magnus, I appreciate you're excited about getting eight kills, but you have to earn them, sunshine. Somebody else there in chat is asking him how much damage has he done. Well, he's only just passed 100,000 now with his seven kills already. <laughs> One of the guys is there in chat, lol, kill stealer. Well, the targets that he's shooting at have mainly been light cruisers and destroyers. But still, if he can get this eighth kill, that would be something pretty special, even though you don't actually get anything special for it. Well, you know, aside from bragging rights on the internet and being immortalised in one of my YouTube videos. Oh, this could be it. Shots are in the air. Nope, Amagi turned. Come on, come on. Is this it? No. <laughs> Kill, steal, denied. Final salvos in the air. Is this it? That Amagi is almost gone. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Eight kills in a tier 10 battle in the Mikhail Kutuzov premium tier 8 Soviet cruiser. Not a huge amount of damage. I've actually done 146,000 damage in the tier 4 Soviet cruiser, the Svetlana, and lost, but that's another story. Still, I'm not here to judge. It was an entertaining battle anyway. Magnus, thank you very much for sending that one in, and congratulations on your eight kills. In the meantime, as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.